Come on and celebrate Jesus today. Come on and magnify him. Let's love on him. He's faithful. He's holy. He's awesome. He's mighty. He's all together lovely. He's sovereign all by himself. He's faithful. Amen. There's nothing like him. So we come to worship today. We come to honor him today. We come to lift him up today. King of kings, Lord of lords, the most high God, the sovereign of Israel, our healer, our way maker, our prophet, our prophet, our healer in every form of our life. And we celebrate you. We adore you for who you are. We thank you for your love toward our life today. We celebrate Holy Week, God. We celebrate Holy Week, God. Where would we be without you, Jesus? We only want to know. Thank you for your yes, God. Thank you for your obedience, Jesus. Thank you for giving your life for our life, oh God. We give you worship and give you a praise. Come on and celebrate it one more time. Glory to Jesus this morning. Can you do me a favor while you're standing? If you can stand, can you stand? Can you stand? Can you just take two seats over to your right, please? Can you just take two steps over to your right? So as people enter, they will be able to uh, take a seat. Thank you so much. Y'all are fine. Y'all are fine. Amen. You guys can just move over to your right. To your right. Can you do that, Melissa Didi? Thank you so much. Amen. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. Thank you for honoring the order of the house so that we can be excellent in all that we're doing. Praise God. We appreciate you so much. Thank you for the covering. Thank you for the spirit of worship. Can we celebrate all the Thank you, Father. Just celebrate his goodness this morning. Is anybody else excited about Jesus Christ? Glory to God. Pastor David just reminded us just in worship of the excellency of God as we enter into one of the most holy weeks of the year. This is Passover. This is Holy Week. And sometimes we've been saved for so long we've forgotten where Jesus Christ snatched us from. But if you could take two seconds and just remember where you were without Jesus Christ, where you would be. I don't take for granted this morning if we're standing here in the presence of God because without the Lord on our side we don't know where we would be but thanks be unto God who always every single time that we think it's not going to work out look where we are right now sometimes we think we do it by our education by our association and by our affiliations but we did it because of Jesus Christ. He alone is worthy. Amen. There is no God who is like our God. Can you give him the glory? If you're watching this morning on social media or any other platform, we introduce to you again Dr. David B. Mills, the senior pastor of Free the Word Church. And we celebrate God here today. His You may be seeing his presence. I'm excited through the word. It's good to see y'all. I want you to know we miss you. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. But I also want to celebrate the Lord because he left me a couple of hands. And, yes. and, and Elder Juanita bless our socks off. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. God, thank you for your heart, worship, and, and how you stand in the word of God, and how you bless us even for Bible study night. We will bless immensely through you. So thank God for the gift of your life and your love for Jesus Christ. Amen. We celebrate you out of here. It's been a powerful week in a lot of different ways. It has been, has been a little bit, amen, but good, a good, a good kind of mess, though. That's the best side, amen. But we're blessed in so many different ways. We had an opportunity to go to the earth of promise. We're we'll talking about that for a minute. Well, we were excited because uh, it's been awesome since we had the High Impact Parenting and Education event. Many people were there for their first time, uh, administrators, district officials, as well as uh, just through the word who helped make it happen. Yeah. And uh, the vice principal of Urban Promise was present. And she had uh, Makaya come and speak immediately. As soon as she heard him on the panel, she said she'd love to have him come in. And then she asked, would I come for him? this Friday past, and I said, I would love to come, thank you, but uh, I think it would also be awesome if my husband came with me. And she said, wonderful, we can get, the whole family will be okay. <laughs> but my heart was really to demonstrate before young people who don't typically always get to see 
the power of a married couple. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, I really wanted them to see, plus I knew God would use Pastor Dave powerfully to minister. They have a lot of young boys in their school. And they asked would I come Thursday to walk through the school to meet with their staff. So we had, I had a chance to do that. And then Friday, Pastor Dave came with us and we had a chance to meet the principal administrators and the different persons. And their heart was just so powerful for these young people. And they were such powerful leaders. These young people, they got up after we concluded our time, prayed for Pastor David and I. And it was just amazing. And they had English, they were involved. Bilingual, they had dual language programs, spoke Spanish, English, uh, went through their process with the math. All it reminded me of, for those of you who are familiar with World Impact in Chester Amen. at Frederick Douglass Christian School. It was the same, similar program as well. And uh, we had a chance to pour into them on that they were royalty mm -hmm. and that they were a church and generation of royal priesthood. And we had the opportunity to give out prizes and gifts to the staff. Uh, but God really used the moment to impact. We thought most, especially the children who were high schoolers and middle schoolers, who were very engaged, very excited, couldn't wait to share and participate and win prizes, but they were also very astute uh, with the word of God. And so I was so excited when uh, God used when Pastor David came in, because he's such a handsome chap all by himself. <laughs> he was dressed from Top, top to bottom in a beautiful gray pinstripe suit. And when he walked in, the young man said, uh, oh, he's sharp, oh, he's sharp. <laughs> and what was funny about that to us is that that's normal for our generation. Yeah. But for the generation that we're living in, they're not accustomed to all yeah. seeing men yeah. come in, yeah. suited down with ties and right. shoes and all that. Mm -hmm. Although we've gone through COVID and we've become a sweat nation, mm -hmm. uh, that has not lost its advantage. Because just like those young people noticed it, those young boys, they immediately looked up to that before he ever said it. So how we present ourselves, we only get the one time to make a first impression anywhere in the world that we go. So, Pastor Dave. Wow, so we were real humbled, and I want you to celebrate Pastor Byrne. I mean, Pastor there, but I love the, the ability that she has to be able to cross over yeah. into school rooms and be able to touch principals and lives of staff. Uh, by the time they, they didn't even want her to leave by the time it was all over. I was praying for her, all right? Uh, but, but just the blessing of them being loved and then Pastor Byrne loving on her was phenomenal. So thank you again for what God's going through you through high impact and allowing God to use you and be able to get those open doors so that we can bring the kingdom yeah. in every yeah. location. Yeah. Somebody yeah. say amen. The other thing we're really blessed this weekend to be able to do was celebrate this Destiny Mills. Right. Yeah. Thank you to all the grandparents so that your children could be there as well. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. So, so, so they, so they, they had really, they had really uh, uh, surprised Destiny really good. He was down on the National Harbor. Yeah. He had planned everything. Him, Christian, and all got together, planned a day where it was going to be at. And look out, he had got a red carpet for her yeah. and the whole stand. Yeah. I was like, okay, all right, you're all right. You're all right. You're all right. You know, so. <laughs> But what really blessed me was it ended up being like close to 60 people. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Oh, wow. And they lined the sides of the red carpet. When she came, she didn't really see it. Then she saw it. She just started losing it. Must have been crying, you know, doing her stuff. But what was a blessing to me was to watch all of his friends and her friends yeah. watch them get engaged. Yeah. 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 Wait to be married and all those kind of things. And they know their testimony already. And they want to walk this thing out in front of God in every facet and every way. So I'm excited about that. I'm, I'm honored. I would gain a son and gain some family. Amen. a pastor and a principal down in uh, uh, D.C. And so we're excited about how God is even orchestrating even all that for the kingdom. So just, just an extension of that all the way also. So we're hyped about that. You want to say something about that? No, we're excited. All right. We're excited. All right. All right. Also, can you give your hands up for Saturday, 16? Yeah. I'm excited, y'all. I'm to tell you, I'm about to go love on somebody, and they're going to be like, what kind of love is this? I'm yeah. trying to tell you. If you're going to get kids hurt at the school, they're going to be like, hey, I know where that park is. Yeah. Hey, we'll, we'll be there. You're like, all right. And one, one of the teachers was like, that's right behind my house. Yeah. I was like, well, come out 
the backyard. Praise God. All right? Come on out. Get loved on and get poured into. And I want to thank all of the partners that have sown into. We already bought the first hundred boxes. That's a done deal. We're now about to purchase the second hundred. We need about four or five more partners to knock out that last hundred. So help me with that. And the idea of knocking that out, our partners online as well as here. People from away have already sown into. So we're almost finishing that up even this week. I'm going to knock that out and order the 200 boxes to feed 200 families. Amen. Amen. I'm going to be fast today, okay? We're just praying if you're watching online and you're sharing this video, come out. There's going to be prayer tables, community resources. There's going to be the food boxes given out. There's going to be moon bounces for the kids. There's going to be Rita's water ice. There's going to be so many things that are taking place. And there's going to be food that we're going to be cooking on that day. Donated by Councilwoman. Oliver, say the, say the first name for me, uh, Kim. Xanthia. Xanthia Oliver, who are partnering with us to make sure that that day is going to be amazing. So we're looking forward to it. We're going to be there at 12 o'clock sharp. The first 200 people will get those boxes of food. Moon bounces will kick off. There will be an Easter egg hunt at 1 o'clock sharp. Yes, dear. 1 o'clock sharp. The Easter egg hunt goes on, and there will be prayer all day long, and we just look forward to welcoming you. Bring your family, bring your friends, make the day all day, kick off Resurrection Weekend with your families, and prepare, expose them to something that's awesome, and then come back on Sunday morning at 10 a.m. as our young people and our families celebrate Resurrection Sunday. Amen. Give God a hand clap of praise. Can you celebrate Deacon Mike with us in this is 40? What, what an awesome man of God you are, man. We honor you. We love you. We thank God for your life and for your testimony, man. I mean that. You enjoyed everybody come around you, man. You don't raise it to you. You don't raise it to you. know what I mean? Amen. Amen. Everybody y'all need to have a Peter in their life. Yeah. Just in case you get crazy up in here. Peter Mike will show up. Praise God. Amen. 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 So, but we love you. We thank God for you. Thank God for your demonstration as a married couple, too. Yes. It is a powerful testimony to life and the idea of what God is doing here. We love you, man. We're proud of who you are. Appreciate you, man. I want you to know happy birthday. Yes. Amen. 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 Uh, uh, and this is, again, Holy Week, where we can yes. celebrate our tri the triumphal entry of Jesus Christ as he's headed to this incredible place called the cross to die for you and me so that me and you ain't got to die. But then he goes to hell, so me and you ain't got to go to hell. Yeah. Then he raises up and gets authority and all that, so we can get authority and all that, and we can live it out here. And he don't even run back to heaven, he hangs out for 40 days to display just how powerful he really is. Yeah. Yeah. And he says, I can leave because now I got other people that can display just how powerful I really am. Yeah. I love him, and I thank him for his sacrifice and his love for this week. And this is the week that he celebrated it came on the idea of a donkey. They celebrated him, and they began lifting up palms of who he was. They began singing, Hosanna, Hosanna, yes. in the highest. Say, Hosanna. Hosanna. Yeah, that means hallelujah and highest thank praise to our king and our entry of who he is. Yes. So today we're going to celebrate him. It's Palm Sunday. Yes. Amen. Here's the hustle on come. We're going to shift the voice today. Pray to our palms. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God praise. Is this holy coming up? Hallelujah. We all be thankful to our Lord God. Everyone, please stand in the building, please. Glory to God. I've been coming from Mark 11 and then providing some prayer over our palms. Amen. Amen. And when they and when they came night nigh unto Jerusalem, unto Bethany, and Bethany. At the Mount of Olives, he sent forth two of his disciples yeah. and said unto them, Go your way unto the village over against you, and as soon as ye be entered into it, you shall find a coat tied. Whereon, hallelujah, never man said, Loose him. Yeah. That's what God said today. Loose him. Yeah. Glory to God. And bring them, bring and bring him. And if any man say unto you, Why? Why go ye this? Say ye that the Lord had need of them. Yes. Lord has need of us. Yes. And straight away he went, hallelujah. He will send him hither. And then they came their way and found the coat tied by the door without a place 
where two ways met. And they loosed them. Hallelujah. And certain of them that stood there said unto them, What do ye loosen the coat? And they said unto him, Neither Jesus had commanded that let them go. And they brought the coat to Jesus and cast their garments on him. And he sat upon him. And many spread their garments, hallelujah, in the way. And others cut down branches, hallelujah, off the trees. And straw and, and straw them in the way. And they and they that went before, and they that followed cried, Hosanna! Yes. Hosanna! Yes. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Yes. Blessed be the kingdom of our father David that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Father, yes. yes. we just praise you. Hallelujah. We praise you this day, God. We thank you, God, that you covered us with his God, on the doorposts of our souls. God, we thank you for the blood, God. Hallelujah. That covers us, God. We thank you for this Passion Week. We thank you for this Holy Week. We thank you for this Passover Week. Glory to God. Thank you. Father, we know that these are mere elements, Father. Yeah. Hallelujah. Of what you have done for us. As we shout a Hosanna. Yeah. As you come into our life. Hosanna. That you say with Hosanna. Yeah. Glory, to Glory to God. Without you, God, we, where would we be? Yeah. We would be nothing, God. Yeah. So, Father, as this event takes place on yeah. today, God, as we get up these, these palms, God, to every individual, those that are on, hallelujah, looking on the air, Father, and Facebook, and those that are here, God, let us be reminded of what Jesus Christ done for us. So we thank you today, God. We pray for each strand on this on this branch, God, that we give it in remembrance of you, God. In Jesus' holy and precious name, let us say, Hosanna!
He alone is worthy of all the glory and all the honor, and he is sovereign all by himself. And again, through the word, I want to thank y'all again for sowing into and making that outreach possible next week. We're excited. I believe it's going to be an impact. It's yeah. going to be an impact. So come on out with your red t-shirts on or whatever you got. Come on out. We want to minister some people in love form. Amen. I was speaking with a pastor this the other day. He said, well, how do y'all do? He said, well, y'all have somebody that purchased stuff? And I said, no. He said, what do you mean? I said, we just buy it. Yeah. And then we want to make a gift. He says, now how did y'all go out on that? I said, the Lord said so. He said, that's it? I said, that's it, man. The Lord has told us to feed people. We've been feeding people since the pandemic. Amen. And Amen. what I want them to make sure to know is that the church is alive and well. Yes. And yes, it's Resurrection Sunday. And I know the church inside knows how to celebrate. But there's a world outside needs to know how much you need. The world outside needs to know that the church is still thinking about it because Christ is still thinking about it. Somebody say amen. 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 And by the way, by the way, did somebody tell you you look good today? Amen. Somebody tell you? Okay, well, tell your people for me, man. Yo, you look really good today. You look really good. You look really good. I know what I used to do. I got to work for you since I somebody look good. You know what I'm saying? Join me in the book of Luke chapter 22. The book of Luke chapter 22. The book of Luke chapter 22. Excited about again what God is doing, how he's proving himself so mighty again. We will have leadership, our last class of leadership training uh, is tonight. Oh my goodness. And then we're back online as far as our men's group, as far as 7 to 7, 7 to 8 p.m. also. So we've been doing that. Uh, we've been blessed in so many different ways. And the guys have been showing up and really pouring out their heart over battle pride. What it is to be, be a man that is free from the idea of being incarcerated emotionally. Man, man. Whew. Uh, they, they, y'all have no idea how much, not only have uh, y'all, y'all, y'all been blessed by me, but how much Brother Jock been blessed by y'all. Amen. Y'all stories, y'all testimonies, the ability about how y'all let y'all hair down. If you got hair, if you got hair. Uh, but uh, how y'all let y'all hair down, how you're real, how you're transparent. The vulnerability in the group is overwhelming. I had somebody ask me, are they always like this? I said, yes. I said, this, he said, this is a safe space. I said, it really is. And it blows my mind about how men can talk about real issues in their life and get healed. Yeah. And uh, if you happen to have a husband that happens to be in the group and you feel like he's gotten a little bit more emotionally free, can you give the Lord a little bit of prayer? Somebody said to me, he said, my husband told me the other day, he was, he was feeling some kind of way, Pastor. I didn't even know how to respond to that. I said, what do you mean? He said, he didn't know talk to me like that, but he said, I, I was feeling this. And she said, you were feeling it. Yeah, that's how we're supposed to communicate. That's yeah, how we're supposed right. to talk. Yeah. We, we, by the way, men do have feelings. Yeah. I just want to make it known. Yeah. 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 Please don't act like we spoke to You know what's killing us? We're too strong. Y'all oh, yeah. 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 get together. Y'all can not watch the movie with somebody. That's the burn. They got in the elevator. They knew each other's grandkids and family by the time we got the first one. <laughs> I said, this don't even make no sense. I said, how did you just do it? Man, you know, me and the other brothers stay each other. So how you doing? How you doing? <laughs> that was it. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> <laughs> but to be able to watch people grow mature and maturely in the idea of what God has is a phenomenal. I want you to join me in the book of Luke, chapter 22. I also want to celebrate one more time, Elder Juanita. Burping all over the place. You got so much word up in here. Yeah. Yeah. Bishop Taylor and Apostle Bowman yeah. and all of that. Yeah. And I also want to thank God for Divine Boyd. I'm trying to tell you. Yeah. Yeah. He blessed us. You better love Jesus after that. If you don't love Jesus after that, you need to get saved again. Yeah. You need to get saved again. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22. Picking up in verse 41, it says this. And when he was withdrawn from about a stone cast, he kneeled down and prayed, saying, Father, if it be, if thou be willing. I'm sorry. Luke chapter 22, verse 41. Before 42, we'll read that. He says, and, and he was withdrawn from, from them about a stone cast, kneeled down, prayed, saying, Father, if it, be, if it be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. And 
Then it appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. Then the word of God says, and, and being in agony, being in agony, he prayed even the more earnestly, and his sweat was as if it were like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. And when he arose from prayer, he was come with his disciples and found them sleeping for sorrow. And he said unto them, why sleep you? He says, Arise and pray, lest you enter into temptation. And while he yet spake, behold a multitude, behold a multitude, and he that was called Judas, one of the twelve, went before them and drew near to them and came to, to Jesus and kissed him. And Jesus said to him, Judas, betrayest thou the Son of Man with a kiss? And when they were all who were about him, saw what that would follow, they said unto him, Lord, should we go hood? I'm sorry, they don't say that. He said, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> should we go third street? Uh, all right, fourth street. All right, they, they said, they said, Lord, shall we smite them with the sword? That's what they said. <laughs> he said, and one, and one of them smote the servant on the high priest, cut off his right ear. And Jesus answered and said, Suffer you this so far. And he touched his ear and he healed him. And Jesus said unto the chief priest and the captains of the temple and the elders when he come to him, he says, be ye, be ye come out and as against a thief with swords and staves or sticks and clubs. He says, and when I was dealing with you in the temple, you didn't stretch your hands forth to me then. He says, but this is your hour and the power of darkness. And the Bible says, and then they took him, led him to be brought to the high priest's house and Peter followed afar off. Father, we thank you. We are not for who you are and you by your spirit. Thank you for your incredible, wow. phenomenal, unstoppable, unchangeable love for who we are. Yeah. It is mind-blowing and confusing all at the same time that a God like you would love us with the kind of love you love us. Yes. I pray that even today we decrease that you would increase. Thank you for your anointing to destroy the yokes and bow to the heavy burden. Help us thank to hear you, you to understand yeah. you, and hear what you want to do in our life, with our life, and even through our life. Move by your spirit. Thank you that your word will never turn to your void. It will come to us and not to do. It will prosper in the words been sent. We expect you. We believe you. We trust you. We honor you today. In Jesus' name, say amen and amen. 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 Say this with me, neighbor. neighbor. Sometimes, Sometimes. you're going to have to deal with trouble, trips, and truth. And truth. And what will end up being is cross there. Right, come on. What will end up being is cross there. That's right. I think some of the issues in the idea of our world, even today, we look at it, we realize that there's so many things going on. And even in this season of our world and in our life, there's so many things happening that can be affecting everybody around us. And many of us, if we're supposed to become so spiritual, we act like we are not emotional. Yeah. And so many times, we can even become very sterile, even in the church. Amen. All right, we'll bring our shock on Sunday, but then we'll bring our, our depression to meet us on Monday. Oh, that's good. And we'll act as if we don't deal with anxiety, we don't deal with adjustment disorders, we don't deal with, don't act like you don't know. And in case you don't know, most of our heroes, they had, guess what, mental issues. Oh, A lot of them had to deal with issues in their life, that even though they love Jesus. But what I love about God is that he knows all about us and still loves us. Yes, yes. Let me say it one more time. He knows all about us. Oh, and he still loves us. Amen. He knows my uprise, my down city. He knows my depression and my anxiety. He knows my adjustment yes. disorder. He knows my OCD. He knows all kinds of stuff about me and still loves me. Yes. So take me believe it. Don't trip. Don't trip. I already got somebody that loves all of me. Yes. Thank you, Lord. He loves all Thank of me. God. And he loves all of me. Even, even with my triggers, even with my trauma, even with that, he loves me through my trigger and my traumas and love me with the truth so that I can have a therapy that I need and walk out this life and show the world what kingdom really looks like. Yes. Somebody say amen. Amen. And so even 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 this week, as, as this comes as this coming week happens with Passion Week, one of the great things about it is our country is in the midst of a lot of different things. And one of it is, can you imagine a two-year or two and a half year therapy session? <laughs> The world is in a therapy session for two yeah. and a half years. Wow. COVID has moved us to the couch, yeah. put us on a room, yeah. and made us see ourselves that we couldn't even get away from ourselves. Yeah. So we had to deal with even ourselves. Yeah. And some of us were rather shallow for it. After you shout, no, it's still there. Yeah. You want to praise, but after the praise, you still got that same problem. Yeah. You know what? We want to be to give, and even when you give, you still got to get rid of the thing that gets inside your heart that you ain't got rid of when you mess out your hand. But I didn't get anything out of my heart. Wow. Yeah. Somebody put it this way. They say, your trauma is not your fault, yeah. but your healing is your responsibility. Yes. Yes. I said, your trauma is not your fault, but your healing is your responsibility. Amen. 
You don't believe it. That's why Jesus says, work out your own salvation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You say, but there's some other parts of you, you're going to have to pay a role and save them too. Yeah. Come on. We got to work some stuff out. There's some stuff in us that even though your spirit is saved, your mind is not. That's why it says, be not the fool in this world. Be transformed by the renewal of my mind. Say, say, God, help my mind. Okay, y'all rest of y'all is too cool. You have no, never had bad thoughts. Never struggled with the idea of a memory that came back. Never dealt with the idea of anxiety or fear or depression. I know none of you have. Come on, come on, come on, Pastor. And as a church, sometimes what we have done is we have mislabeled people and made it so that you can't even be human yes. while you in the kingdom. And what's crazy is the greatest one among us went through anxiety, went through depression, went through an adjustment disorder. The whole idea of going to Calvary is somebody going through anxiety. The whole idea of somebody going to Calvary is somebody passing through depression. The whole idea of somebody going to Calvary is somebody going through adjustment disorder. And we won't talk about it in the church. Come on. So then we can't deal with it. And then the world, they got issues, at least they know. <laughs> the world, no. We the only ones acting like we don't know nothing. We're acting like we got to be perfect, even though we know all of us are perfect. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Come on, Jesus. Somebody say, help me. Help me. You are allowed to feel messed up. You are allowed to be inside out. It doesn't mean that you're not, you're, you're defective. It might just mean you're human. Mm. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> And the ideal here is this, that you would have been in the midst of all these things around us, a global health crisis that turned into a financial crisis, that turned into an emotional crisis, that turned into a relational crisis, that turned into a mental crisis, that then turned into the great resignation. Then you see people shooting each other for nothing in Sacramento. What? And yeah. it's they don't lose it. Why? I've been pent up and I don't know what to do with them. So if you do anything, I'll lose it. Mm. I'll even stop. Life, that if I don't deal with will affect your life. Yes. Yes. And if you never heal from what hurts you, you will end up bleeding on people who didn't even cut you. If you don't deal with what's inside of you, deal with my angst, my issues, my own little endings, and the ethereal secrecies and proclivities and affinities that we have. And I know you deep, but we all got infirmities. I know you deep, but we all got inadequacies. I know we all, I know you say, I'm not saying you say, it's your problem many times. Let me just go ahead and throw it out here. Jesus did not, God, Jesus got up with a perfect body that wasn't, wasn't, wasn't perfect. And then he walked around showing everybody you can have scars and still have some success. Yeah. You can be wounded and still win. Mm. Yeah. And, we, and we're trying to show nobody. I got no scars. I have not, never been wounded. I ain't got no scars. You don't even look like Jesus. You don't even know. Because he was walking around with me. He was walking around with me. He was walking with himself. And he was proving to them. I'm walking around with my men with stuff happening in my body. And I'm scared to tell nobody. Because my real authority is my authority over what hurt me. Won't stop me. Yeah. Excuse me. Excuse me. Uh, do you know about trauma? Do you know about trauma? Have you had any triggers? <laughs> I know you can't answer out loud right now, but it's going to yeah. be all right. Praise God. Yeah. Somebody say amen anyhow. Amen anyhow. Yeah. See, the truth of the matter is that sometimes the idea of feeling the need to be busy all the time is actually a re reducing the problem, the trauma. See, trauma in response means that it's fear based because I will never slow down long enough because I might have to deal with my own self. Oh, that's it. Oh, that's it. Yeah. So I don't want to stop, because if I stop, I'll see me. Because if I stop, I have to talk about them. I've had a yeah. real conversation with you longer than five minutes. Yeah. And me might slip out, and you might see me. Yeah. I don't know why I want to see you. So I'll say, I'll see you later. Stop it. Crazy little brother. Hey, hey, hey. What are you doing? I'm getting away from you. So you don't make me see me. So often all, in our life, we're dealing with stuff like an unprecedented social upheaval, great presentation going on. We even got a war happening, and we act like nothing is happening around us. We act like this is normal, and it's crazy that you in the midst of an abnormal stuff trying to be normal, and you know it's abnormal. You know what? You might need to see somebody. Right? <laughs> Jesus. God, help us. Help us understand where we are and what you're doing. And the idea is that none, none of us, here's the best side is this, none of you, none of us are too broken to be healed. That's right. All right. None of us are too broken so good. to be healed. Say that with me. None of us. None of us. 
lives are too broken to be healed. What really blesses me is God tends to use broken people to heal broken people. What do you think Jesus is doing on the cross? I'm being broken so you can't have to stay broken. It's a place in which, as we prepare for this idea of what this is, trauma is the idea of emotional response to terrible events like rape or accidents or incest or abuse, postpartum, prenatal or postnatal, natural disasters, and a pandemic or an endemic, whatever you want to call it, you still got to deal with it. My problem sometimes is, and I read this in the book and it's scary, somebody said trauma isn't, isn't, isn't what happened to you, but it's what happens in you. Uh -huh. right. They got part of it right, but I don't think they got all of it right, because trauma is what happens to you. Because yeah. if it never happened to you, then you yeah. would have to deal with it. That's right. That's right. That's right. The scarier part is that when trauma happens to you, now it happens in you. Then if you don't deal with it, it will happen through you. Yeah. Yeah. So if the trauma happens to the father, it will happen to a son because the father didn't deal with it. Then it happens to our children, but we didn't realize that I was the one that's supposed to stop it. But because I didn't want to deal with it, because the greatest threat to the ideal of our wholeness is our community silence. That's right. It ain't even the devil. That's, that's it ain't even an answer. It's, it's the areas that we choose our unwillingness to address, to face, to that's deal right. with, and to announce that we've got to deal with some stuff in our families. And some of it was traditional because you say stuff crazy like, whatever happens in this house. Come on. Come on. That's right. That's right. That's, right. Come on. that's why nobody wanted to go back to the house. There's so much trauma going on in the house. Nobody want to go back to the house because the house holds hurts and pains and scars and issues that were never dealt with. That's so good. That's you want to come home? No. Well, our trauma is in the house. Yes, sir. Unless I come back to my own trigger, I don't need to go back to the trigger to get trauma all over again. Come on, Pastor. Come on, two people. All right, it's all good. Give me amen. amen. They don't know what they're talking about. Just say amen. Just say amen. 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 <laughs> There are experiences that produce psychological injury and pains, and trauma does that. And any trauma that's not confronted will continue. Amen. 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 That's really scary. Any trauma that's not confronted will continue. Yes. You don't know, believe me? David had issues. He had boundary issues. And then Solomon has boundary issues. Uh -huh. Abraham was a liar, so Isaac became a liar, because neither one of them dealt with the issue of what was in their heart. Amen. So trauma will be extended as long as we won't deal with it in all of us and through us. Somebody say, Nate, yeah. it's going to be an interesting holy way. <laughs> the idea here is also just that mental health and all mental issues are not mental illness. Come on, that's right, that's right, that's right. One more time. All mental health is not always mental issues. Amen. And every mental issue is not mental illness. Amen. You can be having a moment. It don't mean it's all your life. That's right. That's right. Yes, that's right. Amen. Amen. Just had a moment. I'm mean, crazy all the rest of my life. That's right. That's right. Come on, I, I was human for a second. That's right. You know what's really scary? Jesus was allowed to be 100% humanity and 100% humanity. Yes, yes. And we don't allow each other to be. No. That's right. Come on now. So when your humanity slip out, you think something wrong with you. Come on, guys. Come on, come on. You got an attitude? Yeah, yeah. I thought you were saying. You got mad? What's wrong with you? The blood. No, you me! Thank you, John. Trauma by the numbers of these. 40 million people in America, adults, are dealing with anxiety disorder. Uh -huh. And only 36% of the 100% are actually getting treated. Which means 64% of people with anxiety disorder don't even show up to get treated. Wow. That's right, that's right, that's right. Mm, no. It is what I was going to say. It says it's estimated 21 million adults have at least one major depressive episode. Mm. And females is 10.5%, males 6.2%, and 2020 is 24.30%. And then it went up this year to 36 to 42% of people on this planet are dealing with depressive disorders. Mm. Hey, excuse me. Excuse me. That's smile, ain't you? That's smile, ain't you? We know how to put it on. We know how to show it on. We know how to be, you know what I mean? I'm going to turn it on because when I walk back to my car, I'm going to turn it right back on. I ain't going to get across the parking lot. I'm just going to get to the car. And as soon as y'all turn your head, you know, you ain't tired, but you're tired of this faking. Yeah. <laughs> I'm tired of 
for not being for real. It takes a whole lot not to be for real for a whole day. I mean, I mean, we get through two hours of service on Sunday. I can do two hours. We praise him, praise him, glory. Hallelujah. Hey, that's not, yes. I can go take you in that. Maybe because I was faking for two hours. Wow. It takes a lot of energy to fake. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Wow. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Mm. <laughs> the highest age range for disorders is 18 to 29. Mm. Second highest level is 45 to 64. I'm talking about trauma and not dealing with the trauma. Yeah. Somebody say amen, amen. amen. Again, the greatest threat to our mental and emotional healing is bonus, is our silence and our avoidance. Mm -hmm. It's not that we don't know something wrong. Yeah. We just don't want to talk about it. That's right. That's right. Amen. 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 Why are you sitting in the room with the lights on? <laughs> I'm put a sheet over your head. No. Oh, yeah. On a work day. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. Hang to the shower on four days. You alright? Damn! You made it alright. You're sitting in the dark. Put a shower and sheet over your head. And sometimes we gotta be willing to deal with the stuff that nobody else wants to deal with. Yeah. Right. Somebody say amen and amen. amen. The idea of our indifference, our ignorance, our willingness to dress it, the traumas and the triggers that deal with our life. Not only that, but it's true. Also, most of our heroes, a lot of them in the Bible, had some had some uh, trauma issues. Come on, yeah. Come on. Peter, he probably was bipolar. <laughs> Come on, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm gonna die with you. Who are you? I don't know, man. Bipolar, you bipolar, and you got an anger management problem too because you swung on folk. Sweet, Jesus is like, dang, dude. I'm looking for, I'm saying, I'm saying this out like, why? Did you think we throw a punch? I didn't throw a punch. Put the boy ear back on because you got anger issues. Wow. <laughs> People like Martha, they got OCD. Yeah. <laughs> and watch it because Lazarus and Mary, they both they ain't neighbors. Uh -huh. They let her do it. And they want to help. That's right, that's right. They watch Big Mama clean all day and keep herself busy. And they ain't going to help one minute. <laughs> Mary Magdalene, she got more, more personality than she was. <laughs> she had seven demons in her. Come on, stop playing. Hello, 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 Elijah, you know what I mean? He got depression. So he got manic depression. Yeah, 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 yeah. A woman said, I'll kill you. And he took off running. Mm -hmm. And never came back. He left everybody. Left his friends. Left his family. <laughs> left everybody. And God says, he ran to a cave. Yeah. That's depression. Yeah. Yeah. So some of our actual heroes now. <laughs> Love God. Know how to worship. Go to church. Say neighbor is real. Paul might have had a little issue with schizophrenia talking about I do what I don't want to do, what I do, what I don't want to do, what I don't want to do, what I do, what I do, what I don't, what I don't. Paul, who are you? Who are you? Who are you? At least he had two names, Saul and Paul. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? But anyway, I couldn't make that one, it was too easy. Jesus shows up and he declares something in the statement that I think sometimes in the of the church we miss. He says in Luke 4 18, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Then he says, the idea that he sent me to bind up and heal the broken party, we're going to preach deliverance to the captives. He was not talking about people in prison, he was doing that was in their prison in their own mind. He was coming for our emotional mindset, our relational mindset. He was coming for us spiritually, financially, but also emotionally and also mentally. Why? Wow. He said, I'm coming to get the captives so that they can be washed as healed from being yeah. bruised. The only time you are bruised is because somebody hits you. Yeah. See, trauma is the bruises left after the trauma has left. Yeah. And some of us got too many bruises. Yeah. That's why I can't nobody get close to you. Uh, my, my, my. And we don't realize not what's what happened on the skin level. That's what happened in the heart. Yeah. 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 Somebody say amen and he have. 
So when it comes to this idea of Jesus is, is willing to deal with the truth of our triggers and our traumas yeah. that have hit our life. And the only person who's scared of them, ain't even the devil. Ain't scared of your trauma? No. We scared of our trauma. Wow. I like the way Dr. Lita Phillips said it down when we was in North Carolina. She said, listen, now if the name of Jesus is above every other name, yeah. how come you can't name anxiety? Yeah. How come you can't name depression? How come you can't name adjustment disorder if the name of Jesus is above every name? How come we can't name OCD? I got some issues I'm dealing with. Okay, good. Everybody on this planet actually got issues. Believe it or not, because of sin, we all got dysfunction. That's right. Okay, now that we all do, we can all stop playing. That's right, that's right. Truth of the matter, Jesus says in Isaiah 42, because this way, a bruised reed will not break, smoking flash will not put out. He shall break forth judgment to truth. It means if you're wounded, I'll be alive. Watch this. I'll, I'll bring judgment to truth. And the idea of you bruise, it means somebody hits you. But if bruised, I won't break you. Mm. All of us have been bruised by something or someone. And even though you've been bruised, God will never let you be broken. Mm. I don't think you heard what I said. I, I don't care if the bruise was in fifth grade. I don't care if the bruise was your daddy. I don't care if the bruise was your mama. I don't care if the bruise was a cousin. I don't care if the bruise was a bad, crazy boyfriend or a bad, crazy sister. Or I don't care who it was. Whoever bruised you don't mean they broke you. I will not let it go out. I will bring that. And I'm able to heal not only the wound there, but also the wound there. Yes. He goes on to let us know that without a doubt, that healing doesn't come from the eye of us hiding. It comes from us exposing stuff. Yes. I said healing doesn't come from us hiding. It comes from us exposing stuff. Yes. Jesus yes. says, he says, for he, we, have not, we have not a high priest that cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. What you didn't say? He said, I, I, I can't talk about your victories. Mm. I'm in touch with your environments, yeah. with your weaknesses, with your OCD. I'm in touch with that. I'm in touch with anxiety. I'm in touch with depression. I, I didn't go around trauma. I went through trauma for you. Yes. Good God. Christ went through it for us so that we can walk through it for him yeah. and be a demonstration. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. He came for all of us. Say he came for all of you. And that includes any trauma, triggers, and anything else that was left in the eye of my life. He came for all of me. Isaiah 53 and 5 says that he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. It means he, he came. And he came, he, came, he came broken to deal with our brokenness. He became wounded so we could deal with our woundedness. He took our strikes so we could deal with our struggle. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you praise him just for this part of the passion? This is the rock he's coming. In that cross, thanks to a team that deals with my trauma, deals with my trigger, deals with my trial, deals with to the point that I can triumph. Even after all of that. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love it. His death deals with all of those things in our life and for our life. We know those spaces and we got to deal with those mental spaces in our own life. And I like what Dr. Phil said. She said, she said the church has to repent. As a pastor, I repent. I don't ever want you to be so spiritually delivered that emotionally you jacked up. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Come on. We know how to run, we know how to shout, but when stuff breaks out, we're going to lose our mind. Mm -hmm. And maybe the, one of the best things that actually came out of COVID, mm -hmm. it showed us that we wasn't emotionally strong as we thought. Yeah. 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 And now we got to strengthen those very areas. That when things happen, you don't have to lose it. Amen. You don't have to hurt nobody. We don't have to go on a shooting spree. Amen. 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 Three people. Amen. You see, we got to be able to shine the light in the dark spots and you'll end up and deal with the eye of the hurt in our lives and the bruise of life. It remains necessary that we might be able to show somebody our cracks so that they can see the power of Christ. Amen. I got to show you my cracks so you can see the power of Christ. Amen. If I hide them, you will never know. Amen. Yeah, literally, I know for me, I, don't, I know for me, me and Vernon, Vernon remember this. During the holidays, we went to go see this movie called uh, Jer the Journal of Jordan. While we was watching the Journal of Jordan, I had anxiety. Mm -hmm. I don't normally have it. I don't normally have it. I really don't. But this moment, because I was in the military, because I, when I was in the Indian Ocean, we sat on a boat for 117 days at 127 degree temperature, and both and, and, and helicopters were coming from the north, planes from the south. We didn't know whether they was enemies or, or friendly. Mm -hmm. And so when I hear them, I used to always be like, oh, God, this is my last. Mm -hmm. This is it. Mm -hmm. And so when the movie came up and all that stuff came flying back, I was sitting next to her and tears started coming up. I know y'all understand this, but this is, you know what I mean? So I started crying. I started crying right there. And I had to reach out to her hand and hold her. And when she looked at me, she said, you all right? I said, no. 
I'm having a moment. Anxiety came back. The flows came back. Yeah, I feel like that that was death, but God kept me for life. God, I'm both happy and excited at the same time. I didn't even know what to do with myself. And here was the best part. When we got home, we had a long talk about it. I found out what real therapy is for is to get what's in you out of you. Yes. Wow. Yes. So good. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. So we talked about it for a while. I shed a couple of tears. You know what I mean? I got some friends that didn't make it. They didn't make it out of the military. I did. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, I had all that kind of process for the moment. And so sometimes what you're running from, you need to embrace. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we got to accept this fact. It did happen, but God still saved me. He still got me. Yeah. He's healing me. He's restoring me. I might not be perfect, but I'm in process. Yes. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. As she's going to talk about that the guy deal with trauma. I'm going to get to my text. Don't worry. I'm going to get there. I'll be sure when I get there. She talked about trauma is like an exploding building. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Trauma, yeah. trauma is like an exploding building. Oh, but we all don't explode the same way. Some of us, because something outside hit us, it's like an explosion. Boom. And it shakes everything and everything falls. And then sometimes some of us are because of implosion. And the implosion, what they do is they set detonators on every level, and then when they explode, boom. You don't see the explosion, it contains it. Mm -hmm. And there's some people in our lives that are walking around, and the reason that they got whole hardness and cold. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. Jesus. Good. Good. Mm -hmm. Samantha, no! Mm -hmm. Come on, Bastard. You all right? No, I'm all right. You all right? Mm -hmm. No, 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 you about to fall. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. You about to blow up. We step back for a second. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we don't deal with any of those things. And the more time times we put these things in our heart, we're going to end up exploding and falling down and having an implosion in our life yeah. because we carry too much. You are not meant to carry everything in your life, That's all right. your life. Amen. That's right. That's right. That's right. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. Sometimes it's an earthquake and the idea of the things you can't control around us like this pandemic. You couldn't control that. But it shook everything around us. Shook our homes, shook our jobs, shook our families, shook our finances. Mm -hmm. But you still stand. Look at you, one of us. Praise God. Sometimes you hear from the impact of it. And the matter you said something was incredible. You said the average emotions last five minutes. So if you can hold on for five minutes, you can make it. Mm -hmm. Come on, that's yes. Yes. I said, dang. That's so good. Yes, yes, yes. That's why we didn't kill that person. That's why. <laughs> I made it to four minutes and 59 seconds. <laughs> 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 I'm trying to help us. I'm trying to help us. Mental emotion. Our mental state is critical to every other state in our life. Yeah. And literally, we got to understand how to walk it out and how to walk it out and not be able to be in a place that just you better stand like Jesus does in the eyes of his resurrection. And what I celebrate this time is that again, he got up, but when he got up, he got up with scars that still, and he got, he got up with holes, but was whole. He got up with holes. But was whole. He got up with scars, but was successful. He got up with wounds, but was winning. So if you got scars, you're still successful. If you got wounds, you can still win. If you been hit, you can still be holy. Stop, stop acting like I got a it or I can't be that. I can be this and that. If I got resurrection power and my faith together, and the Bible says you were raised in the likeness of Christ Jesus. So guess what the likeness would really look like? You were scars. You would host. You would watch this pinpoints in your head. The likeness of how he got up was like that. It was not perfect. If you are getting anything in this right now, I want you to give the Lord a good praise. Come on. In the text, in the text, Jesus is headed the idea of Calvary on his way to Calvary. He's having this half old passion week moment. He's flowing and that kind of stuff with the boys. Then he turns and messes them up. They had a great time. They were singing Hallelujah last week. This week they're talking about whoop, crucify him. Anyway, on the road route, he's on the way there. Then he turns and says, the son of man must go to Jerusalem and must be killed. And then they start looking at each other. Killed? Didn't he raise last week? How they gonna kill him? You do. Oh, come on, can't be. Sometimes when people are in your life, they don't even trust the word that come out of your mouth. And sometimes when you're going through stuff, they don't even understand how you go through it because they're not sure if they want to go through it with you. So the disciples is in this moment, really, that they know something is happening to Jesus, but they don't even want to admit that what's happening to Jesus is really happening to Jesus. The Bible says this. It says, it says and when he was withdrawn from them, because one part of anxiety will cause you to withdraw. That's right. You gotta get away from everybody because you want nobody to know that you're dealing with something that you don't want nobody to know that you're dealing with because you don't want nobody to know what you're dealing with. Come on. 
I know you know what I say. <laughs> go ahead for me. Go ahead for me. Go ahead for me. Look what the text says. The text says this. It says, he was withdrawn from them, and they knew he knelt down and prayed. And when he prayed, saying, Father, if it be thy will, remove the cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. And him being in agony. Uh, I said Jesus was in agony. Uh, you know what's really scary? We don't even let Jesus be in agony. Uh, He's too spiritual to be in agony. Uh, He's too deep to be in agony. Uh, Jesus could never have anxiety. Hey? Eh? You know what anxiety is? Anxiety is going to a couple days future, bringing all the problems there and bringing it into the day. Anxiety is being able to take a loan out of a place that you don't even live. Come on, it ain't even happening. You're talking about what's going to happen by the 15th? What's going to happen by the 30th? Do you know I got to go see the doctor? Do you know what's going to happen next week? No, we don't know. You don't either. of intense fear for us without, without any kind of cause. Sometimes we just go into anxiety. Wow. And sometimes we meet our fear more powerful than our faith. Mm. Amen. And it will happen. And it can happen to any of us. Say amen. amen. You will have it for a moment. That don't mean you've got to keep it. Amen. That doesn't mean you've got to keep it. Matter of fact, depression and, depression and panic and, and attacks and anxiety are sometimes not signs of the weakness of who you are. They're actually signs that you've been trying to be strong for way too long. Wow. Mm -hmm. That we haven't talked to somebody about what our real issues are, the weakness that we need to deal with. And Jesus is trying to have a conversation with his boys, but they can't get sleep. Yeah. <laughs> and it's terrible when you got anxiety and all your friends got depression. <laughs> 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 I'm in scripture. I'm in scripture. All your friends got depression. You got anxiety. Y'all be the fuck you do. No. Alright. I'm going to <laughs> They are depressed. They sleep. They can't get up. Depression makes you not want to move. Not want to face up. Not want to hope. Not want to believe. Not want to go nowhere. Just sit somewhere and go to sleep. He get, I'm dealing with anxiety. And y'all depressed. I'm going to the cross and I'm about to save y'all and y'all can't get out. Yes. Don't want to go to work. What? Don't want to do nothing, be nothing, go nowhere. And, and y'all tripping on me. Right. <laughs> Say, David, neighbor, that's a little bit too real. A little bit too real. Anxiety doesn't come from thinking about the future. It comes from us trying to control it. Uh -huh. yes. It comes from us trying to control it. Well, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do that. 
Nu går det hjem, 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 nu Hey, can you check on me? 
<laughs> that was amazing to me. It's the first time. <laughs> Anxiety will cause stress, restlessness, symptoms, emotional disorder, a mood swings, the outcome kind of stuff, tension, anger, make you jumpy, make you have sweats, like Jesus had sweats. Yeah. Fear, stress, headaches will cause you to be scared, chest pain, phobia, tension, become tense when you should not be tense. Mm. Panic attacks, all that stuff is signs of anxiety. All right. Over here's the idea of tips to control it, like limiting alcohol and caffeine. Since y'all church people, I don't even talk to y'all about that right now. Caffeine. See, 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 that's nothing. <laughs> y'all need prayer, man. Y'all need prayer. <laughs> It can aggravate the idea of the anxiety and panic attack because you got that caffeine does that. I don't know how to say nothing about that. <laughs> Positive attitude, the idea of replace with the negative thoughts, the idea of your life. Exercise, just take a walk. The best thing sometimes you can do is get out of the area you're in and breathe and walk. Go see a tree. Go see something breathe. Just something that move other than you. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, I mean. Go get some sleep. Some of y'all stayed up way too long. And the reason you stayed up, you scared to go to sleep. Because if you go to sleep, the next day will show up. Yeah. <laughs> and you don't know if you're going to face the next day. Some of us got to get professional help. And I said counseling. And I mean a counselor. And I mean therapy. And sometimes since you wouldn't go, he'll bring a certified counselor named Pastor to say, okay, you be that counselor until they go to the counselor because they ain't going to the counselor. Yeah. 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 Take some time to relax. It's okay to do nothing. Some of us now, they, they have themselves say, 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 self, self, I give you permission. I give you permission. Do nothing. Do nothing. And not all day, but <laughs> not all day. Not all day. <laughs> not all day. <laughs> like, that's the guy who's lazy you know. Because <laughs> <laughs> when you stop, you're really going to run into yourself. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. And I'm not talking about stop and watch TV. Right. That's right. Because stopping and watch TV will mess you up because then the TV is your house. Uh -huh. wow. Come on. I'm not talking about stopping going on social media because then social media will take you either up or further down. <laughs> <laughs> you can be happy when you scroll. Right. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. You can act like you don't know. You can act like you don't know. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. Go, go ahead, yeah, help me out. The second piece of this thing is he says, watch this. He says, cast all our cares and our anxieties on him because he cares for us. Philippians puts it this way, the idea of the truth that can help us deal with our trauma is the idea that be not anxious. Even scripture says we deal with anxiety. Jesus dealt with anxiety. How in the world are we going to act like we don't have something when it shows up? Come on, man. He says, be not anxious, but for nothing, but in everything, through prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, and with thank of request, we know under God, with the peace of God, the past understanding, will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Whatsoever is true, whatsoever is honorable, whatsoever is just, whatsoever is of good report, and whether it be lovely, whether it be commendable, if there be any excellence, if there be anything worthy of praise, Think on that and stop thinking on how jacked up you are. What you didn't do, where you failed, where you missed it. You thinking too long on stuff God said. Stop thinking. Wow. And then he goes on saying, Matthew, there much no, be not anxious about tomorrow. Tomorrow got enough anxiousness for itself. Sufficient is the day of his own trouble. Anxiety, I like this one. Anxiety, Proverbs 12 and 25. Anxiety in a man's heart will win his day. But a good word Sunday morning will make me glad. Praise God. I needed that word. I'm about to hit somebody. Go 
ahead. Go ahead, there. Let me go. He says, Good, good, look. I want you to see it. I'm petitioning about this this morning. Because I, I know some of us will go see somebody. So somebody will go see us. His name is Jesus. Amen. 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 You can take a picture of it. I want to take a picture of it. Now you go on the way through. Take a picture of it. Take it home. Go through it on your own time. Amen. Find out are, what are all these symptoms. The tight chest. Why am I swallowing like that? Brace the heart. What's going on? Why am I sweating crazy all the time? But I'm preaching. I'm, amen. Praise God. Amen. I'm sweating. I'm sweating. Uh, chest pains, dizziness, all kinds of stuff, numbness and tingling sensations. What is that sign of? Panic attacks and restlessness and feeling the womb. Because sometimes in our community, we won't deal with this stuff, so we die early. Uh -huh. Good. Yep. Wow. We, some of us could have lived, some of our people could have lived 15, 20 more years. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. That is actually dealt with what was going on in their world. Yeah. Wow. Amen. Somebody say amen. 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 If you get some, just give the Lord a quick shout. Amen. 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 Come on, come on. So, 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 even in that, then, then Jesus is so awesome. He goes on to say, here, He says, after we walk through the scriptures, one of the things that I read is interesting. He says, the best cure for worry, depression, and melancholy is in brooding, is to deliberately go forth and try to lift up somebody else's sympathy. Yes. Rather than focusing on yourself. Amen. In other words, when you get depressed, go find, go find a way to help somebody else. Mm. And it can help lift you out of there. It can help the dopamine chain in your mind and your yeah. heart. Worry often gives small things. Worry often gives small things gigantic shadows. Yep. Wow, that's so good. Mm. If it's out of your hands, it deserves the freedom to be out of your mind. Mm. If it's out of your hands, you can't train up about it. Then why are you carrying it in your mind? Yes. Wow. Some of us, man, if we open our mind up, 1,900 people will get out of us. <laughs> <laughs> so we're carrying too many people in our mind. Somebody say amen. Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead. We're going to keep on moving. We're going to keep on moving. He said, I feel he says this. He says this one comes from. He says, he got up from prayer and went back to the disciples and found them depressed. And the scripture says they were drunk by grief. They weren't sleepy. They were depression. Mm. Full blown. He just told the son of man about to die. He was like, you want to die? Do you know we just been on the left? I left everything. Yeah. I gave him a boat, sir. We gave him a boat, sir. We gave him a boat, sir. Luke said, I gave him a boat, sir. You know what I'm saying? He was like, he gonna die? Yeah. You know what he said? He gonna get back up, is he? I'm going to need a drink. Okay, didn't sing it, didn't sing it. I'm just going to sing it. So, so the only reason I'm saying this is this is going to get to my coping mechanisms. Because some of us, they go find a drink for a coping mechanism. Amen. Amen. You know people. Something, something happened. I got to go and get a drink. Amen. Amen. Jim Green ain't going to pay the bill. Amen. Vodka is not going to pay the rent. Amen. And the weed. <laughs> The weed is not going to pay the mortgage. I said, I ain't scared. I know I'm pretty sure it's under there. I have my culture. It's like, oh, do it. Yeah, you can get done with that. When you, what, you still got $500? I know you're high, but it's your account. It's your account. Today. 
goes on to say, anxiety. Anxiety in us is depression. Depression is what happens to you when you when you don't care about anything. But anxiety is what happens to you when you care about everything too much. It's the other side of them. They, they hang out like kissing cousins and they just crazy. Anxiety, anxiety gets you out there, but then depression will sit you down and hold you. Mm. Somebody say, Maybe. Maybe. I know somebody who really needs to hear this. His name is me. His name is me. His name is me. <laughs> People think that depression literally is the idea of wearing black, but they don't get it wrong. Depression is a constant feeling of being numb. Being numb to emotion, being numb to life, and being able to wake up in the morning and want to just go back to bed again. Depression is believing you are out of options, out of direction. Depression is the idea that you have been sent into isolation and separation, but you were the one that made the decision. That's right. You are both your jailkeeper and the jail set. And so sometimes looking at our situations and conditions without the presence, power, and the promise of God of heaven in them. It's when you can't see God in your situation, it's easy to slip into depression. Yeah. For all of us, it's easy to slip into. Mm-hmm. Right? Maybe it's depressing in the idea of all of our world, the issues and process in the idea of things like weight loss, but it's also weight gain. Mm-hmm. Lack of appetite, lack of activities, dark mood, bipolar, sometimes it's seasonal. You know how you know when you go into the wintertime and when it's dark, the people don't come back out of the house. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Amen. But then as soon as springtime comes, you got energy. You go like, what happened? Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was seasonal. Yeah. It's, it's, not, it's not personal, it's seasonal. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta yeah. know what your issues That's are. Right. Yeah. So you can be able to walk through them. Somebody yeah. say amen. Amen. I mean, when was the last time you got a good ugly cry? Yeah. They are healing. Yeah. Why do you got even tears? Get them out. Right? And then there's a place in which I found out that when it comes to leaders, two and two times more time just have to get distressed. And then three times more to be have addictions. Ten times more to be bipolar. Pray for the brother. Pray for the brother. Amen. Amen. Leaders also watch this. The things that make us strong is what makes us weak. You're empathetic. You're quick-minded. You make sharp things. You're, you're, you're optimistic. You create creativity. What makes you strong is what makes you weak at the same time. It's walking through those things and it's being able to see people that are just like us. That doesn't mean that there's something wrong with them. It's just seeing that they're dealing with the issues that they have in their humanity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Elijah was depressed, but he called down fire. Yes, he did. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Come on, Jeremiah was depressed, but he was the one talking about, I got fire shut up in the bowl. Right. Uh-huh. Then you weep and prophet the next week. Uh-huh. <laughs> see, see, sometimes our Bible is so real if we were really with, really with the right place. Yeah, yeah. Right. that's right. Peter went through depression. Come on, man. He ran away from Jesus. Jesus had to tell him three times, I love you, I love you, I love you. Kind of like we heard it the first time. Mm-hmm. You know what I had to say three times? Because depression will block your ears. It's called you not to hear. So you yeah. speak to them over and over again yeah. to make you believe what you know. Yeah. Wow. Jesus, oh, I love that. Wow. Hey, your neighbor. Hey, I'm so glad. So glad. So glad. He's about to let us go right here. Right. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Take a picture of this. I ain't gonna read. Take a picture. You read on your own time. I want you to go up what it was really like. Not shower regularly. Not living in filth. Um, earn, earn, not earning good grades when you could do it, but you don't do it. I'm tired all the time. No motivation. No energy. Working so hard. You only work because you don't want to stop working to yourself. Mm-hmm. All right. Depression can make you feel like, you know what I mean, you're not even a part of the whole world. It's a weird feeling that can make you become detached. These are real issues. Say real issues. Real yeah, issues. That sometimes as a church, we don't talk about and deal with it, but we need to. The wonderful side of it is all through scripture talk. God, God actually talks about depression. We used to be what's called depression, because of other stuff. And when he says it, it kind of sounds really strange, but, but we don't put the labels on it. That's right. And since we don't put the right label on it, we don't end up with the right life. Amen. All right, I'm going to move go ahead. This is, what, this is what the word says about depression. He says, listen, come unto me, all you that are labor and are having depression. That's depression. And I will give you rest. The Bible says the Lord is near to the depressed because they're brokenhearted. And he will save the one that's depressed because they're crushed in their spirit. The Bible says that the Lord is a stronghold for the depressed, oppressed, depressed. He's our stronghold against yeah. it. Yeah. 
goes on to say he's falling in a time of trouble. He's saying, you have turned, oh, turned from me over your morning. He turned my morning into my dancing. He could change my depression. Come on now. Yeah. 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 But not if I cover it. Mm. Yeah. Not if I keep it. Yeah. Not if I don't tell nobody, call nobody, share with nobody. You can't even pray for me if I don't tell you. Amen. 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 Mm. Goes on saying Psalms 40, he says, He waited for him patiently and climbed my ear, but cried for him. He drew not of me in the pit of my destruction, depression, and got me out of the mirror hog. I don't know what a hog is, but it should be like a fog. That's what it means. It's the idea says, set my feet on a rock, making my steps secure. Why? Because when God gets us, He brings us out of depression, sets us in a good place. Jesus, get out your praise, because I got you out the place. Yeah. Got, just because I got out the place, sometimes I bring you to a church. So you can get your praise out, so you can go ahead and bless God and bless Him with that old song. I'm going up the rough side. I don't need that one. I need, I need a new song. I need a new song. I'm trying to help you. That's why I said a new song. You can sing the same one tomorrow. Song of praise. A song of praise to our God that many will see and fear and put their trust in God because I got out of my depression, out of my anxiety, and I'm happy. And everybody's trying to figure out, how did you get happy? I really got Jesus, and I really got joy. Yes! Yes. Yes. Yeah. Here's my clothes. (laughs) All of us got trauma in some of the areas we had to deal with and dress. But you better learn your truth. Yeah. You better learn the truth. Yes. What I like about it is in this situation, telling me of another situation, the next, next verse says that Jesus started walking, and so was Peter walking with him, and then the mob shows up, and the mob shows up, Jesus rolls up on him. Peter says, Shwing! Yeah. <laughs> Should we fight? <laughs> <laughs> it's evident. That swords are a trigger for you. <laughs> Peter don't need to be nowhere near a sword. He got playitis. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he needs anger management. You know what I'm saying? He go ahead. He swung before Jesus said anything. <laughs> Can you imagine Jesus like Peter? Come on, man. <laughs> It's amazing that when you have trauma around you, because Jesus is still in this anxiety, that even in the midst of trauma, God will give you authority to heal the people that come and hurt you. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes in the middle of the trauma, he'll trust you to heal the people that try yeah. to trauma your wife. Yeah. 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 They coming to whoop his behind. <laughs> they coming to string him up. And the Bible says, the same situation, two men respond differently. Chris Rock and Will Smith. I mean, um, uh, I mean, I mean Peter, 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 Peter and Jesus. What I mean, yeah. I mean Peter and Jesus. You know what I mean? <laughs> same situation. One responds with self control. The other one lets his emotions take trauma over from him. And anxiety, his fear, take over him. They can manage it. Just snaps out. He snap. I mean, he cuts somebody. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Come on, Pastor. And in that moment, all I love is Jesus knows the anxiety is in Peter. He don't even say nothing to him. But he's still working with him. And so what triggered Peter was one thing, but it didn't trigger Jesus. And what they thought was going to trigger Jesus was That's good. See, he was going to use a sword to trigger Peter. We use a kiss to trigger Jesus. Yeah. See, with love, kisses everybody. Mm. And he would kiss love and kill him at the same time. Oh. <laughs> wow. Wow. And he thought, when I kiss you, it would trigger you. Because mm. you know who I am. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Come on, come on. You know I'm coming to kill you. You know I'm, I just sold you out. Yeah. Let me kiss you. For some of us, you know what? We would have punched the living. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> but it didn't trigger him. Because yeah. Jesus knows his own track. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. 
But what I love about most is the devil didn't know Jesus' truth. Wow. The scripture says, had they known when they crucified Christ, it was really yes. causing yes. him to go to hell to be twice as wild. Because when they when they triggered the eye of his arrest, they triggered his trial. Yeah. When they triggered his trial, they triggered the eye of court. When they triggered the court room, they triggered the eye of him being beat. When they triggered him being beat, they triggered him being put on the cross. When they triggered him put on the cross, they triggered him dying. When they triggered him dying, they triggered him going to hell. Triggered him keep death and hell, crushing the enemy, to get him back up. Do you know? Why are you just touching yourself? Why are you lifting your hands? 
Yes. Father, we thank you. Thank God. Good evening. Yes. Glory to God. Father said that you are not. Yes. Has not been touched with the feelings of our infirmities. Hallelujah. Yet from our sin. You know everything. You've been through anxiety. You've been through adjustment disorder. You've been through depression. You've been through OCD. You've been through all of it for us. Thank you, Lord. And you healed us. You went through it and got up and you got over it. And this week we start to celebrate just how awesome the cross is. Yes. And in spite of trials, in spite of tricks, we still get to stand and care of the increase of all God. Yes. Thank you, Lord. I think it's why Jesus was crucified, y'all got it. It means the hill of the skull. Yeah. It's where your mind is. Mm. I think it's why Jesus was through with this process of Gethsemane. It's called in the press, or where they press oil out. Mm. So he was going through the press. So there was the oil that was in him, the anointing that was in him, would actually come out. Yeah. What you going to do, Mike, you bringing the oil out of you? Mm. You don't know it's oil to the Father, I pray that he knew that. He was trying to be. He was in those places that we've been hurting and losing in God. Calls to win where we've been. We talked about the God that we live, the place that we go, that we had to walk through. We recognize you said in your word, Father God, that as he is, so are we. Amen. I know our picture of Jesus may be messed up, but the one he got up with again, it has holes. Amen. The one he got up with has scars. Yes, yes, yes. So if you got scars and you got holes, you actually look like Jesus. Amen. 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 Father, today, you embrace everything you want. You receive your love, your grace, your forgiveness. And even in this moment, God, you release those that might have wounded us, that we might be free. Amen. You release them, God. They hurt us. They might have wounded They did something. But God, I, I can't be free holding them. Amen. And you came that I might be free. Yes. Today, you want to release those people you did them. Yes. You said, if you don't forgive us, you won't be forgiven us. Ain't nobody holding up our forgiveness but us. Amen. 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 Glory to Nobody's God. holding up our forgiveness but us. Thank you. Nobody else that powerful. Yes. We forgive them right now. Yes. We release them right now. And we recognize God. We get rid of guilt. We get rid of shame. You say your word, Father God. There's no condemnation to them that are in Christ. Yes. We walk out in the spirit, not in the flesh. Glory to God. There is nothing condemning me at all. Amen. Your word is true. I trust your truth over my trauma, over my triggers. Yes, God. I trust your truth. You are the way, the truth, and Hallelujah. Come on, give him a praise as we celebrate. He's our hope. He's our strong tower. Yeah. He's the big breasted one. Yes. And we can put our head right upon his chest yes. and release whatever it is yes. that will try to make you feel that you have nowhere else that you can go. Yes. Pastor David so eloquently encouraged us today to remind us that while we are 100% human, yes. God is still 100% God. <laughs> and he can handle whatever it is yes. that you may be going through. There is nothing that will stop you 
from being able to go boldly to the throne of grace and obtain mercy and help in your time of need. He's amazing. He's awesome. He's so mighty. He is present even right now saying, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. My yoke is easy and my burden is so light. He's a he's amazing God. And even now, you can just draw nigh to him. For he said, if you draw nigh to me, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to draw right on back to you. Oh, he's so awesome today. I don't care what you're going through. You can just allow him to love on you. Just enjoy him today. Just enjoy God. Just enjoy God. Oh, just enjoy him. I don't care if you need to cry. I don't care if you need to laugh. I don't care if you need to praise him. I don't, whatever you need to do. It's not a shock to God. Hallelujah. It doesn't make him change his mind. He still loves you. He still loves you. He still loves you. Oh, I'm just celebrating him today. Can you celebrate Jesus? Can you celebrate God? Even in whatever you're in. Can you celebrate Jesus this morning? Oh, I'm just celebrating God. I'm sorry, I just came to celebrate this afternoon. You heard Pastor David talk to us today and remind us. I didn't have to die. Christ did. I didn't have to die. Christ did. He got up with all power in his hand. He's got all by himself today. And I just enjoy him. I don't know about you, but I made it through the week. I made it through the week. I didn't have to try to figure out how I was going to get here today. I got in my car, I had gas in it. I turned the heat on and we made it to church. Some people didn't make it here this morning. But we came in our own strength. No, I didn't have to ask nobody, is it okay if I go to church? Guess what? We came and we came to church. I celebrate Jesus. Oh, I'm just giving glory. I give him honor this morning. I magnify the Lord. I just want you to help me exalt his name forever. Anybody grateful? Most people I know in here got a job or they got some income coming in. Most people in here look around their family was still operating. They still were able to live in the house. They woke up in. He says a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. I tell you how to help get out of depression when Pastor David said. How about giving him some thanks? Yeah. Praise looks good on you. Was you able to find that minister? Can you put that on for me this morning? Praise is coming for the upright this morning. I tell you, it's a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. For he is good. And his mercy endure forever. He is good. And truth endures for all generation. It's a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. He said he put on the garment of praise. Anybody got anything to praise God about? He put on the garment of praise for the burden of happiness. Pastor Savings, Pastor David said, how about you just begin to praise the Lord? How about you give thanks unto the Lord? For he is good. Oh, come on and celebrate Jesus. Freedom looks, anybody free this morning? Freedom looks good on you. Come on, Minister Mark, but help us celebrate Jesus. Come on and help us celebrate God today. He's worthy to be praised. Come on and celebrate. I'm not in Ukraine this morning. I got something to celebrate for. I'm not in Russia on today. I got something to celebrate for. I want to give him praise. 